Welcome to Security Weekly Virtual Hacker Summer Camp. I'm Paul Asadorian, and I have been a penetration tester in the past, and jail is not a place that I would have ever wanted to uh, end up, albeit there was always a possibility. Uh, and for Justin and Gary, uh, you know, they have a story about that, and they're here to uh, talk about it today. Gary Mercurio is the senior manager at Coal Fire. Gary, welcome. Thanks. Justin Wynn is a senior security consultant at Coal Fire. Welcome, Justin. Thank you. I mean, after your whole ordeal, you do get to present at Black Hat. I mean, that's got to be something. <laughs> Certainly not comforting for, for your ordeal. As uh, when we were talking about this on the show, I'm like, this could have been any one of us, guys. Like, we've, uh, you know, a lot of my friends are all, you know, pen testers, uh, managed teams of pen testers. So, um, Justin and Gary, uh, I guess kind of set the stage. It'd be awesome to kind of hear from you, you know, 30,000 foot overview uh, of what happened and, you know, kind of led into uh, this whole talk on Black Hat and um, uh, an effort to help protect ethical hackers. That's going to be an uphill battle. So it's six months of events, give or take, trying mm -hmm. to condense a 40 minute talk. So here, what we can do, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, mm -hmm. But with the talk, we're trying to run three, run people through what exactly happened out there, the details of the engagement, um, how things went, and really just what it came down to was getting unlucky with an over overzealous sheriff over there in Dallas County um, and locked up. You guys kind of kind of know how things portrayed itself out in the uh, in the media ever since. So we're, we're, our Black Hat talk is pretty much centered around se setting the facts straight and delivering um, and kind of what really happened behind the scenes while everyone else was talking and we weren't able to. Right. What, what, what was going through your mind as you were like entering the jail cell? Was there, was there a moment like that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, I mean, surreal. Like, I can't believe this is happening, but yeah. it is. So you, you got to go through with it and you um, just have to hope that your company has your back and, you know, the contracts all, all hold up and everything's looking good and people understand things. I mean, even at that point, though, I think we realized what was happening wasn't about any conflicts with the engagement. It's more conflict about jurisdiction. So it's kind of out of, our, out of our hands anyways and just just rolling with the punches. Right. It, it sounds like coal fire was behind you both 110 percent. Is that true? They were. Yep. Yeah, they were right through. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so what, what transpired, like how long were you basically in, in jail or detained, um, in, in how quickly were you able to get out? Like, what was that process like? Uh, so I think we we're booked probably around 1230 AM on September 11th when we ended up staying in jail for probably, probably right around 20 hours. Um, so process was we're booked, we go through the process, um, interviews and they, they take all our gear for evidence and we kind of explain and going through everything like that. Um, and still trying to be very, very helpful and forthcoming with everything, making our phone calls. Um, and the next morning we're arraigned, go in front of the judge and, uh, explain our case and she wasn't having any of it. Um, so I mean, just trying to fight that battle and then going back to the jail cells and then make, getting, getting a hold of who we could either at our company, um, or spouses or points of contact. Um, and trying to sort things out. And then at some point, Coal, coal Fire uh, had to resort to bailing us out because the state state did not intervene and, and step in like they said they were going to. Right. What, what is it, if there was like one takeaway from the infamous permission slip, um, you know, what would that be? I know it's hard to distill down in a, in a short period of time, but, you know, we've always worked with permission slips uh, and they have improved over time. Um, but what, what's some advice that you have to, you know, catch any loopholes in that, in that process? Um, I want to definitely screen all the numbers that go on there. So we left it up to the clients to include their proper contact information. One of them was bad. So we mm -hmm. weren't able to hold of a third of our contacts. Um, but it, everything else kind of, kind of held up as you'd expect, you know, we presented our get out of jail free card to the responding officers, um, that, that night and they, they were all fine with it. They actually got a hold of somebody, verified us and ended up letting us go, um, so everything with that, like there's definitely things we would want to change that came into light, you know, after it's scrutinized for six months by um, a legal process, things definitely came to light that we absolutely need to change with that. Um, uh, but overall, uh, I, I don't think any changes or anything kind of kind of would have made a difference with how things went down that night. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it worked as advertised originally. Right. We, we handed it to them. They looked at it. They verified us. They said, okay, you guys are good to go. You know, thanks. Thanks a lot. This is a crazy job and it's really cool. And let's chat about it for a little bit. And that was our mistake. We chatted about it for a little bit and that's when the sheriff showed up. So, and we just taken our get out of jail free card and got out of there. We would have been fine, but our big mouths got to running and we started talking and like we're prone to do and the rest is history. And, and Gary, the 
jurisdiction from the sheriff, uh, I think, was one of the details that uh, maybe a lot, pe a lot of people didn't understand, right? I mean, not all of us are experts in law enforcement jurisdiction. What, what was that kind of detail there? The the detail that the sheriff was hung up on is is and forgive me if I butcher this if there's any lawyers in Iowa reading or watching this but um, from our understanding the county owns the building itself and the county is responsible for the security of the building oh there's my dog sorry I work from home <laughs> that's okay um, it's better this way <laughs> <laughs> um, but the state the state utilizes the building and owns all the employees and all the assets within the building itself so the sheriff was caught up on the fact that he provides security that he owns the building that we don't have authorization to test the building but the more you go into it the deeper you get technically we're state contracted employees and we have as much right to be in that building as the judge does who is also a state employee so if a judge were to leave her laptop in the computer in the in the chambers go in at two o'clock in the morning accidentally set off the alarm they wouldn't bring her to jail and say she doesn't have authorization to be there just like they shouldn't have brought us to jail and say you mm -hmm. don't have authorization to be there we had as much right to be there as any other state employee but that's uh that's what the sheriff was hung up on as we own this building the state doesn't they don't have authorization to let you come into this building but they do so you know who knows has it changed uh kind of the chain of who we're requesting permission and notifying when we do especially physical penetration testing you know that's a super hard question because what do you do when the state tells you they have authorization mm -hmm. to do something do you go to the government and say are they sure is the state sure they have authorization to do this? Do you do you go down and do you call every every sheriff? Like, do you go down the totem pole and mm -hmm. say, "Hey, the the state said this. Are they sure? Uh, uh, what what's the amount of effort you put in to check on whether or not somebody has authorization to do something? If you have a private uh, private client you're working with and they own the building and they say they own the building, do you do you call the title company to make sure that that client actually does in fact own the building prior to doing any kind of penetration testing? Uh, it, it's it's one of those rabbit holes that you can how far how far down do you go to make sure that the that the client especially in a case like this which is the state actually does have authorization even if we were to go down that originally it's so convoluted with the laws and who owns what and who has the ability to do what we still wouldn't have an answer right right and and uh, having said all that i mean you, you guys are both still fans of doing physical penetration testing and are uh have participating and guiding the community as to what, you know, permission means and, and protection for ethical hackers, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, we've got experience other people don't, right? Yeah. <laughs> for better or worse, right? You've yeah. Gained, you've gained, that, choice. gained that experience yeah, without the choice, <laughs> right? And so um, you've set up a website. Um, what, what are some of the other kind of uh, advice and, and protections that you're, you're kind of promoting for the community? The, the biggest thing is just to try to get some sort of good Samaritan law passed. If uh, EMT is doing CPR and, and something happens that's out of their control, then why should they go to jail? Just like when we're, we're actually trying to safeguard people and make sure people can't sneak into a place and do something, you know, much, much more nefarious than leave a USB device around. Then, then I, I don't necessarily think that any of us should, should be kind of persecuted like we were. Uh, that, that's that's first and foremost. Um, th there's a bunch of other things that we were, were thinking about, like getting a uh, kind of getting a bond set up in case this happens to somebody else and they get arrested. Uh, uh, they have they have some money that's available as well. Uh, mm -hmm. We just we're lucky that a we have a, a CEO that was adamant about getting us bailed out and didn't care how much money it cost. But if there if this is a mom and pop shop or a smaller a smaller firm, yeah, they're not gonna have hundred thousand dollars liquid. You know, to be able to to send to a different a different county, uh, the the bail bonds in this case doesn't work when you're a high risk flight, right? So they they don't just ask for ten percent; they want ten percent, and then they want the rest either on some sort of corporate credit card or something where they can guarantee the funds for the full hundred thousand dollars. So if this was a small shop, you know, good luck coming up with a hundred grand in cash to get your guys out. We, we would have been sitting there if we were a small boutique shop or boutique testing firm or something of that nature. So those are the two biggest ones that we're working on. But, you know, hey, if we find something else, uh, we'd also like to work with um, some of the bigger names in the industry and come up with some sort of, uh, you know, just general guidance SOP that people can go through and kind of work from. And then obviously 
you know, adjust from there when, when you're on your engagement that you have, but to have something make it a little more uh, concise and, and user friendly for those. And so a lot of what we do is experience, right? You, you learn from somebody who mm. learned from somebody who got trained from this guy or, or something of that nature, but there, there isn't really something out there that you can go and read the, you know, the grand book of physical pen testing. Cause I, I don't know, do we want that? Do we really want right. a book out there that lets everybody go like just break into anything at, at a whim? So it's, it's tough. I, I don't, I don't know what that answer is to be honest with you. And that's kind of what we're setting that the, the initial link up is so we can link up with people and asking those questions, you know, what, what do, what can we release? What should we release? What ethically is, is right to do that? And, and how do we, how do we hold on to that and make sure that only actual professionals that are going to use it for good means are going to get to it. I don't know. That's what we're looking for. We're looking, right. we're looking for help. Cause I don't, yeah. I don't know the answer to all those questions. Yeah. Cause one, one question that I think we even talked about, uh, you know, when, when this was happening was, you know, a lot of um, professions require uh, certification or, you know, to be an EMT, you have to you hold a certain certification, firefighters, right? And to have that good Samaritan law apply to uh, penetration testers, does that mean we need some type of more formal certification that will help us if this situation, you know, uh, arises again? That's a good question. And then what, what does it look like? You know, yeah. are we going to back, are we going to back one certification body and who's going to make money off of that certification? And cause God, man, I hate certifications. I hate how much they cost. And I hate the fact that nine times out of 10, you can just you know, weasel your way through it just to get through it or copy somebody else's notes or uh, it, it's again, it's, it's one of the, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I need help. We need help. Right. Let's figure it out. Yeah. And then it varies from from state to state. Have you uh, kind of spoken to other people and what other states might look like uh, in terms of uh, you know dealing with this type of situation? In regards to the law, yeah, each state is completely different. Uh, some states, the county doesn't own the courthouse; it's under the state jurisdiction, or the county does own it, but they don't own they don't own the actual security of it. That's up to the occupant of the courthouse. They just physically own the property itself, not the courthouse itself. It's a different entity. So, I, it, it's again, it's one of those things where if we were in Indiana, would it be different? Mm. Yep. You know, yep. if we were in Florida, would have been different. Yep. So th there's nothing we could really do to prepare unless we went state by state by state and looked at all the laws and even though I, anybody that's ever dealt with a law like i'm i'm fairly certain laws are written so we break them and that's how it feels <laughs> half the time right it's true and it, you know speaking of the variances in laws and i love the idea of the good samaritan law and you know evangelizing this this whole process but that's here in the united states what i mean what happens when we go internationally right now we've got a whole different set of laws to to deal with you don't want any part of that. I don't know if you've seen some of the laws in the EU, especially. I think it's around like Germany, Belgium area. Uh, you can you can be thrown in jail just for having I think Cali Linux on your system. Yeah. Unless you unless you're certified there, like the Crest certification or whatever the certification mm -hmm. they've got in Germany. But yeah, there it's that's a whole that's a whole different ball game. That is I think that that would require a group of, in my opinion, if I was running a company, that would require a group of lawyers to make sure that everything was on the up and up and we had all our all our eyes dotted before I sent any pen testers to a different country to do what we do. Right, right. Um, so Gary and Justin, what uh, specifically you are you know requesting help from the community? Um, if people go to coalfire.com forward slash ethical hacker protection, um, what, what what are you asking of the community? What can we do to help? So we're trying to open up discussion. Um, it's something Coal Fire's put together for us uh, as a medium for us to exchange. I think they're calling it a work group. So, I mean, initial steps are uh, gain context who's interested. So whether that's lawyers or physical penetration testers or just other hackers who are interested in how this may overlap in the virtual domains as well um, and, and get the discussion started. So after that, I'd love to hear the ideas that the community has. There's already been a lot of great things that have come up from um, security, uh, what was it, the awareness con. Um, so, I mean, I'd, I'd gauge that as kind of a starting point and then going from there and seeing, uh, what other ideas people have and then how coal fire can put them in motion. Yeah. Even if, even if we're not leading it, uh, we just, at the, at the current point in time, right. We happen to be, I don't want to say the face of it, but we're the reason that yeah, we're trying to get this started. Right. So mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're trying to, even if we have to pass it off to somebody else who's more qualified and who's better for it, then that's what we want to do. We just want to get the discussion started and and try to fix some of the issues and figure out the best way going forward. And that's, that's really why we're asking for help is, is 
we just want to start it up. And if, if we have to lead it and, and we're the best ones to do it, we'll do it. If somebody else comes in and they're like, ah, I've got this experience and I think we should do this and they've got a great idea, then go for it, man. We're, we're, we're there. We'll help as much as we can, as much or as little as you want. So for the, the full story, uh, when is your black hat talk? Was it Wednesday at what time, Justin? Twelve twelve thirty. We we know. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they'll they'll be there. Trust me. They'll be there. <laughs> Just go to Black Hat. Wednesday, twelve thirty. Yeah. We think. Uh, it sounds right. Yeah, it sounds right. So uh, check out the full for the full story uh, and uh, to read more information and participate in the discussion. Make sure you go to coalfire dot com forward slash ethical hacker protection. Justin and Gary, thank you so much for coming on Security Weekly. Thank you. Awesome. Pleasure being here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. With that, we will take a short break. Come back. Guess what? With more interviews. So stay tuned.